I asked you to read section 4.5 in your book and some of you did some of you did not you need to stop this video and you need to walk, go back read and take notes over 4.5 however once you've done so once you've taken notes over it um, I want to give you and look that cute little pointer I don't want that I want to give you um, some additional guidance with this material so within the reading one of the things that you found is that you um, can determine if a compound an ionic compound is soluble or insoluble in water and there's you know what that means soluble it will dissolve insoluble it will not dissolve you have got to get to the point where you can predict if it's soluble or not and the way you predict this is to memorize the solubility rules. These are contained in Table 4.1 in your textbook. Now this is um, 4.1 in Table 4.1 in Tro. It's 4.1 in Tro Section 4.5. If you go to OpenStax, it's in 4.2. Uh, there's a little table in there. I'm not certain that the OpenStax Solubility rules are all exact same ones. I will hold you responsible for the ones that are in TRO, and these are the ones that will be listed in this little video that I'm recording now. Now, insoluble compounds, when we say they're insoluble, you need to realize that it does dissolve to some tiny, tiny extent. And we'll learn about those tiny amounts, but not until Chemistry 107, so that'll be pretty far down the road. But let's look at the table. Now, we have to be able to read the table and know what it means. The first part of the table are those compounds that are soluble. Okay? So, an ionic compound is going to have a cation, we know, and an anion. It's not a compound unless it has both. But if the cation is one of these cations, it will always be soluble. There are no exceptions. If the anions are this anion, which is nitrate, or the acetate ion, it will always be soluble, no exceptions. Now, that does not mean you have to have one of these with one of those. What it means is if the cation is this, it does not matter what the anion is. So we take a cation like K, all right, does not matter what the anion is. So if I took an anion like this and made it KCl, it would be soluble. If I took K and I put it with a sulfide ion, which is 2 minus, with a K plus, it would have to be soluble because this says if the cation is one of these, it's always soluble. Now the next three are usually soluble, but we give you the exceptions. It's not soluble if its cation is this, this, or this. The next one, sulfate. Sulfate usually is soluble, but there's exceptions. If it's connected with any of these guys, it will be insoluble. Okay? Always soluble, always soluble, usually soluble. Here are the exceptions. Usually soluble. Here are the exceptions. Next. This is a little group of things that are generally insoluble. So if you run across the hydroxide or the sulfide ion, usually it's insoluble. Well, there are exceptions. Well, of course you have to have these exceptions because those are soluble with no exceptions on the previous slide. They are always going to be soluble. When S2- minus pairs with these three guys, it will be soluble, so those exceptions for only the sulfide. And when hydroxide pairs with these three guys, they will be um, slightly soluble. Okay, so it's a little bit different. It's the same ions, but with the hydroxide it's only slightly soluble. Carbonates and phosphates, they're insoluble, but again we have our exceptions, the ones that are always soluble on the previous slide. So you commit these to memory. Before you commit them to memory, however, have them handy and let's use them. Let's use them to answer a few questions. Here's the first one. Which of the following ions lead to ionic compounds which are always soluble, no exceptions? 
Okay, if you look at the rules, hopefully you got the right answer there. Always soluble, no exceptions. The only one on the list is C. Notice, let's go back up to this one. Always soluble, no exceptions. These guys are on that list. There is no rule for um, iron. Nowhere anywhere, okay? There's no rule that says irons are these. But there's a rule for chlorides, but they have exceptions. There's rules for hydroxides. They're usually not soluble. There's rules for sulfate, but there are exceptions. So that is the only one without exception. Okay, now, the way you answer this to decide if it's soluble or insoluble is look to see if there's a rule for one of these. See if there's a rule, and then note the exceptions to the rule. Is this soluble? or is it insoluble? Okay, what's the rule? Well, let's look back, because some of you got it, some of you didn't. Here's the rule for sulfates. See it right here? Usually it's soluble, but is the ex there an exception listed here on that? Let's go back to it. Is there an exception? Yes, the silver is an exception, so it has to be insoluble. All right, do that one. Look for a rule. All right, so that one is soluble. Look at this one. Find your rule. And nitrates are soluble with no exceptions. So we know this one is soluble. Like that. Okay, so um, you've practiced it a little bit. We'll practice it some more and um, when you watch the video on how to write precipitation reactions, you're going to need to know how to come up with insoluble salts.